Hello everybody and welcome to what I think is now round <laughs> round 12 of the open section of the chess essay online uh, team selection or Olympiad selection tournament uh, open section as well as under 20 section there's a female section as well but uh, I'm only commentating on the uh, uh, the prior the open and under 20. Uh, just too much chess going on at the moment. So many great games. And I think there's one great game. Uh, oh no, wait, that game's still coming. So, 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 so some of the games have already started uh, for the round. For instance, uh, The Wolf and Keegan Gullis, they started. And uh, let's just see who else has started. Duji versus Enachi, Matt Pon. They are starting. He's a warrior. Is he in the game? Supremacy Blitz against Hakia. They've started. This is now open section games I'm showing. We do have Matt Pon and Duji waiting for their game. It wasn't easy not seeing them online yet. Stienkamp uh, had a draw in the previous the match, the previous game. And now he's playing against Roberto de Abreu. And uh, he had a good game against Roberto de Abreu uh, at the end of last year, in uh, or maybe beginning of this year, uh, January. or I don't know when Interregionals w uh, was played. Uh, but they, they made a draw and uh, Stienkamp really could have taken him down. So let's see if that happens. Ramos is joining us now. Supremacy Blitz and Hakia. And Ramos, uh, Jacob and Guni is online, I think, the first time today, playing a game, game against uh, Craig Willenberg. And there's supposed to be six games. Uh, there's one. I'm not seeing Mr. Warrior in the game. Uh, Supremacy Blitz is in the game against Akia. I think we've got that. Two. Uh, Bramos, we've already got this uh, game. Uh, Ripartu and uh, Steenkamp. We've got this game already. <laughs> so I've got a few doubles. Uh, two. Oh. Well, I've only, only got uh, four games over here, so I need. I'm missing a game or two. Yeah, let's just uh, see uh, the pairings of the round. Here you guys can see them. Uh, round 12. Played, 12 o'clock, Stienkamp. Oh, so the are two games that are already kind of done. Some people already played the round, as you can see the. Uh, Rounds got a bit mixed up, I think. Uh, but apparently there was already a game between Wasn't Easy and Lupus for Men. So we only have one, two, three, four, five games this round. And this is, I think I'm, I, I'm, I need my CR's game. I think that's the last one. And then we've got the open section. The game is happening in the open section. See my, I'm a bit, a bit in the way. Sorry, guys. I just want all the attention on me, not on the, the chess. That's why I do do that the whole time. Okay. Let's... Uh, yeah. Then we can go to the under-20s. I think there are a few interesting games. It's not the big pairing yet. I mean, obviously, we're waiting for... Um, the pairing with uh, the the two twins, with Keith and Banele. They're up game against each other. Drive pen Vusi. Let's uh, jump to Floppy the dog. Is he playing? Against the Panda Bird. Who's offline for a second? Offline. Okay. Checking his opening books. Uh, Panel is already done. <laughs> uh. Or oh, he's uh, just got his uh, 
buy this round. Let's just see. They if this is round twelve, then uh, round twelve at twelve. This is round ten for the um, for the under twenties. So round ten under twenties. Banele, it's opening prep. Let me just show you guys how well his opening prep helped him. Uh, there you go. There's his opening prep against the buy. That's how come he's already done. In any case, so let's jump to the games that are actually happening. Oh, so it depends on who, who's, uh, <laughs> whose TV I am, whether I'm going to see chat or not. So that's actually not true. How, so in the spectator room is just different in... Oh, it depends on when I go to the room or something, but... Uh, any case. Who else are we missing? Kanya and Devon. The guy that wins, he... Uh, I thought in the previous game he was going to take down Banele, but uh, that game was way above my pay grade. Uh, Banele is in a league of his own. Uh, I did not understand why that position was good for him until I opened a strong engine and uh, the engine helped me. <laughs> okay. Matt. Let's go back to the open. Matt against Duji. So this is Heinku. Duplicy against Matt Pond. And Matt's time usage is still super fast, so I'm guessing he's fine. He still knows what to do. And then uh, we've got, in this game, Supremacy Blitz and Hakia. Hakia is an interesting player, I must say. He's got the ability to take down guys like Matt Pon. Wait, uh, yeah. And then in other games, he just, uh, I don't know what he does. <laughs> so it's interesting. I really wonder who this is. Whoever he is, all these guys are super super strong in any case. So um, sometimes you just do weird things. And Roberto Stienkamp, I'm interested in this game this round. Roberto Stienkamp. Roberto uh, has gambited upon playing aggressive chess. And Jacob Nguni is uh, joining us again, Ramos. And uh, I just realized I've been making a big mistake this whole uh, stream. It's not Jacob Nguni. It's a Johannes Mabusela <laughs> uh, playing under the Ramos account. I, for some reason, I thought it was Nguni, but uh, Mabusela. So just uh, if you're out there and you have the software to do so, just change all my previous videos please to Mabusela when you see Bramos no Mabusela has had a few good games so far in this tournament I see I'm still waiting for his opponent uh, Peace or Warrior he's online not making a move back already 7 minutes past 12 Unless uh, this is an old game and uh, they're supposed to be playing with different colors. Or well, something's wrong. You need to challenge the guy with the correct colors. So white or black or... Crazy Castle took down uh, Mark Hansen in the previous game. Vusi and Drypen already looking very interesting. Ooh, what's going to happen here? Vusi probably needs to take the pawn. If he doesn't, stuff like this uh, could be interesting. Or queen here. Yeah. I think taking the pawn, uh, knight takes, and you're dropping the rook in the corner. So Vusi's already got uh, interesting ideas. Paul Gluckman against Panda Bird 1. Paul with a spatial advantage. The Wolf and Keegan Chang. Uh, Keegan and Gullis already resigned. What? It's already done. The Wolf. Uh, oh, what is this? 
People are asking, what is this? Blunt is a queen. For a rook, no compensation. Gala is uh, not happy with himself, resigns. Mazibuko, they haven't smitten in this game. I think this is a good game to watch. Actually, uh, who, oh, I'm missing, actually, I'm missing Mark's game. I think he's also playing. Offline, but he's somehow playing. He's just simply offline. Okay. Vusi, Drypen, liking Vusi's chances. Uh, he's playing uh, Bobby Fischer-ish. Bobby, Bobby Fischer-ish, if you can say it like that. Um, very cool ideas incoming. Uh, trust me, this is stuff like that, followed by uh, King takes. Check, King up here. Night check. Uh. Uh, st uh. Still a while to go. Is Mark still offline? I wonder. Wonder what's happening. <laughs> the chess master has a strong name. Okay, so a few more moves have been played, I apologize. Um, This is a big game in the junior section. Um, let's go back to the um, uh, the open section again. Heinku plays interesting openings as well as Matt Pond, so their matches are very interesting. Uh, types of imbalances, like what is this pawn doing? It's upsetting this uh, knight and this bishop. So I'm liking Heinku's posi position. Um, Sometimes he's just got a really great opening prep, but after that it's uh, kind of uh, like there's nothing. Okay, supremacy against Akia. Black offered a draw already, white declined. Supremacy wants a win, I guess. Bishop versus the knight. Might be slightly more comfortable. 
Stienka, I'm still up the pawn. What was his idea exactly with knight h5? Just to defend his b7 pawn uh, before moving this knight away. Mabusela and Craig Willenberg. six I'm liking uh, Mabusela's way of playing he's got this uh, weak double pawn um, so when it wasn't captured he just decided well let me make the most out of it and uh, disrupt your nice pawn structure uh, by the way, this would have been a great pawn structure had there been three pawns, but now Mabusela needs to improvise uh, using the double pawns and a c5 pawn. Maybe knight g5, attack that f7 pawn. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking he's looking at something like pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop... Uh, rook, you can take this pawn, and you've got a pass pawn. So he's considering what happens after takes, takes, and wait, let's look at it. Takes, takes, uh, bishop f7. I see. I'm not getting my, my letters right today. It's bishop c7, hitting the rook. Uh, he goes for it, he goes bishop c7 first. It also makes complete sense. Um, where does this rook? You can't. You can go here, right? Pawn takes. Pawn takes. Bishop takes. And Mabusela will be up a pawn. And it's not bad. It's not bad. Both these pawns are pass pawns. You can always make a threat out of the one pawn, lose it, and win an end game with your other pass pawn on the same side. Ah, uh, strange stuff. Chess. It's a, it's a strange thing sometimes. We, we wait. We. Just got to move. Uh, rook c8. So pawn takes now. Okay, so uh, uh, we need to say that uh, Keith is already done for the round. Um, it's an interesting thought. <laughs> so while a lot of people are still going to be struggling, Keith is done. Masia, the Peaceful Warrior, uh, finally they, they are playing. And uh, Masia is up a pawn. I don't think there's anything that the bishop takes. No, it would have been cool if there was some way to kick the queen away from defending the bishop. Okay, um, back to the under 20 section. Crazy Castle. B trophy master, so we have a disconnect in this game or something. Time out. I don't think it will be the only one. Uh, 
Wow, we actually left the game of the queen h6. And we are returning to it. Um, <laughs> after all of that time, Drypen only has made his move now. So we, if we were kind of just spectating one game, we weren't wasting too much time. <laughs> um, stuff like this, uh, you obviously want to try. But your knight, is, knight needs to be here, so... Now it works way better. Just be careful though, I, I don't know. Feels like dry pen is getting smothered. Knight g5 now, knight here. Rook check, king takes, queen check, king moves. Let's simply take that knight. Okay, so I'm looking at knight g5, knight f7, rook takes, king takes. Then you've got knight takes, and king will need to take the knight, and then the king's fine. Knight g5, what else is there? Knight g5, knight f7. Knight h7 check should also just win the game. So king e8 and you can go take uh, the rook. And even if takes check, you can go king b1 and you're fine. Uh, you're also threatening to take this rook then, stuff like that. So I'm thinking knight g5 with the idea of going knight h7. Remember the rook is spinned. Can't take the knight there. And the king is then boxed. So you'll have to go king e8. And... Really does feel like mate is close by. Oh, actually, you do have a. You know, this move doesn't exist. Now, you'd like to play knight f6 check as well. Um, but there's just the trickiness of queen takes knight. But you can do it. Pawn takes and after knight takes queen. Just simply take the rook with your pawn. And that is complicated. That is complicated, but Vusi is definitely winning after knight g5. Uh, most of the lines... Oh, wait, wait, okay. Sorry, sorry, excuse me. Oh, I'm forgetting about this bishop on this diagonal. I'm pretending like it doesn't exist. So now you need to try knight g5, but it, it, you can't go bishop takes g2 because of uh, rook takes and king takes and just mate on h8. So your bishop's fine right knight g5 these squares are covered you're threatening to take with the rook and mate back here one of the ideas is the king needs to take the rook so knight g5 and uh, vusi will be running home with this game this would uh, be a very satisfying move to see uh, i expect he will will find it knight g5 bishop can't take just because of rook takes king takes and mate so we we've established knight g5 Black needs to do something else. Uh, what is there to do, really? Maybe move the king away. Don't know what that achieves. You're, it's possible to take the bishop also. But there should be something more. I think moving the king away is the best bet for, for black. Um, sorry. Knight here, moving the king, but uh, let's let's just consider. So Vusi needs to consider knight f7, but uh, I think we've spoken about knight f7. It's just a simple knight h7, and the theme is still the same. The rook can't take because it's spinned, so king here is necessary. And uh, one of the points I think I made just now was that uh, you can even insert knight to um, f6 check instead of just taking the rook. So let's take away these so that the lines are more clear. So that check and after the king moves here. Let's just say uh, queen takes uh, knight. Because remember the knight on f7 is also hitting the queen on h6. You can go pawn takes hitting the rook. And after knight takes you just take the rook still pinning this and it's game over. So I like, I like going knight to h7 and knight f6. 
So you, there's also the option of going night, uh, sorry, so let's say <laughs> I'm drawing one straight line because you're going to h7. I check after knight here and uh, after the king moves you can just simply take the rook that should be game over so Vusi really needs to play this I think uh, maybe taking with a queen is something he's afraid of you can just simply take the queen play the play up the material it's two minor pieces for a queen um, and they're not really great. So, Fusi's got this game. Paul Gluckman, Panda Bird 1. This was another game with just the simple timeout. Uh, what is happening? This is now. It happened to Panda Bird 1. It's not happening in this game, so it's not a, it's not a fault on Leeches' side. Uh, the Wolf obviously won quickly, we remember that. But what happened in uh, Mark's game? Black resigned. Um, I wonder if there there's a mistake and. It wasn't just a timeout. Uh, Black resigned. And maybe he disconnected. And reconnected and resigned. Because you need to press the resign button to resign. Nietzsche doesn't resign automatically for you. Um, But the real time clock says says it all. I mean, where's the real time clock here? No, that's even gone now. But I remember it saying he's only got three minutes on the clock. So maybe uh, Mark is just over it, disconnected, and decided he does want to play with three minutes. Uh, any case, so this is the big game: Kanya versus Devon. Kanya is up a pawn. Actually looking to grab maybe the c6 pawn. And that's not possible because of uh, back rank ideas, but... Um, Devon's possibly just getting back the material. Queen takes... Okay, I, I'm not sure what happens here. Let's uh, come back later. So a lot of these games... Uh, Oh, black resigned here. We did. We did miss knight g5, knight g5, knight h7, and just queen takes. It was too much. Uh, his opponent saw the idea of mating, like so. If bishop takes, so after knight h7, I, I'm very curious as to how much better you are if you play uh, knight f6 versus just taking the rook. Queen takes g7 is very good, but how good is this? It's relatively good. Queen takes, this is what I was looking at. Yo. Hello? Yeah, you're it. Bye, thank you.
Okay, that was uh, just my grandparents. <laughs> I think I muted you. I think I muted you guys. Otherwise, the whole discussion's on there. And okay, the sounds working. Cool. Uh, I don't need that. Stienkamp uh, lost here against Rubartu. Um, that lo final night folk was all she wrote, but he went. He lost the piece earlier, earlier on as well. Um, he had the nice knight h5 idea. I, I really liked it, uh, holding on to this pawn. Uh, Roberto backed up, put pressure on f7, and Stienkamp quite legitimately went knight g5. Now, somehow this uh, dropped the piece. Okay, so I think Stienkamp's idea was if it takes, I'm just going to play knight d3. So. Uh, what is this about? You know what? I think his idea was uh, to make uh, three pass pawns for a piece. But honestly, I don't know what uh, c5 was about. Uh, interesting choice. C5. So I think one of the issues was just D5 in general. And he takes D5. And then your knight is bad, bad. And at least after the knight moves, uh, this knight will fall. So I think that's what Stenkamp realized after uh, a3. Pretty crazy. I did not realize that d5 would actually just be winning a piece. So that's why he played uh, uh, c5. Okay, so tricky, tricky knights, and they got caught. A Nachi is struggling against the uh, Heinku. And I'll say struggling, I think it's the correct word, because uh, the king is pretty exposed. And uh, the queen, uh, the queen seems to be a better piece when um, the king doesn't find safety, and also he's got a nice pass pawn he's uh, working with. Heinke is for a moment considering queen g2, I can tell you. Um, something like... He's uh, going to feel some time pressure. But uh, I think Heinke can do convert this. I really think he can. And we are catching up with Mabusela here. After winning a beautiful pawn, I think what ended up happening um, was a trade into an endgame. A pretty joyish endgame, uh, giving back the pawn. And just a solid draw. Okay. Hosea, down on the clock, but up a pawn against the peaceful warrior. Yet again, the same type uh, of endgame, opposite side colors, bishops, he's up a pawn, but there's still rooks around. So he's going to hold on to the rooks this game, he learned his lesson. Okay, so crazy, so this is the weird junior round where everyone disconnected and stuff. Kanye has now up two pawns, but uh, Devon has won a game earlier on by being down two pawns. Um, in an endgame type of position where he had uh, some kingside attack. And that was a game against uh, Keegan Agalis. <laughs> so, uh, definitely not, not game over. 
he will wangle uh, something. Mainly, I think it's tricky to do so at the moment because you want to play something like queen f3. A bishop b2 stops that. And if you don't move the queen, the spin is coming in any case. And the more you trade, uh, the better for white. It's now got two passed pawns on the queen side. Uh, therefore, Devon just moves the queen away and will try. something else um rook uh, d3 rook e6 uh queen c8 check king here bishop falls back um oh, that's the trick that's the trickiness with the rook e6 i guess Okay, that, this is the final game, right, of uh, the juniors. Yeah, knight just simply back. I think uh, too many problems after rook e6 and the bishop backs up. You don't want, don't want to trade the knight, so a nice find by Kanya. Tactically, it, it holds on to everything. It did everything except negotiate a queen trade. Uh, I can already guarantee you this isn't, this isn't a problem. The queen uh, and the bishop will need to stay... Wait a minute, isn't that a blundering uh, rook? No, king can go to d2. Uh, if the king wasn't able to go to that square, this uh, would have been a big blunder, at least. That's weird. I think I lost the connection there for a second. I think the queens are definitely getting off now. I'm not seeing how uh, Devon is holding on to his rook and his queen. So uh, Kanya, after all of that, is going to convert this game queens off Let's see if uh, devon's got any tricks up his sleeve he doesn't go he doesn't go down easily so uh, so they say the standings on the group i guess um okay so we'll come back to this game i'm expecting kanya will will win now uh, a Nachi resigned, as I expected. The queen was too much for the exposed king. And uh, after making a threat out of the one pulse pawn, Heinku ran back and made a threat out of the other. What's the trick here? If a rook takes, where's the fork? Over there. Okay. And that's a shame. There goes the piece. And another pawn incoming. You can even block a rook check with queen a5. Well done to Heinku. Uh, taking down Matt Pon. This game was agreed to a draw. Stienkamp lost. Uh, Mabusela drew. And Masia has managed to lose a piece. Okay, so he got kicked away uh, from his 
bishop and but no, it's actually okay now it just seems like a draw Yeah, this should just be a draw. Peaceful Warrior uh, could maybe play for more. He just needs to... He's going to try and get the pawn off first. So we're going to see a, a very slow game over here. Let's see how Kanya is doing. Kanya um, should convert this. Uh, it's going to take a while. So this round is going to end a bit uh, later than the others. So we, we have a, a moment to just uh, take a look at the... Uh, ranking cross tables and see if uh, they've updated them so far. And here's the ranking cross table after round nine. Uh, remember, we are already wait. We are round ten now for the juniors. So, uh, Banele had his buy right now, and uh, Keith won. So it's going to be eight and a half, uh, nine. Banele and his friend Keith in the lead. Kanya should also be at eight. Only one loss so far. And Mark is really struggling. One win in the start of the tournament. And now an unfortunate disconnect against Michael Simpson. Uh, you guys aren't actually seeing the standings. I'm just speaking about them. <laughs> there you guys go. That's what I'm showing. Eight and a half now after this round and nine. That's the leading score. Uh, in the senior section, in the open section. Yeah, I'm not uh, not that organized with my stuff. They haven't updated it yet, so they they still only got ranking after round four. You know what? It, it won't actually update right until the end. So some people have been playing around fifteen games. Uh, So that is really confusing. I don't know. So they've obviously got their own system. They are challenging each other on and stuff. They're not sticking to the schedule. So I think uh, someone like Peace or Warrior needs to work in a few games. We're supposed to. We're supposed to be moving on to round thirteen next. Next. Uh, in any case, so uh, let's go to Masia's game. Has he managed to draw? Uh, it's going to be a slow grind, but I actually I can imagine him losing this now. Um, wait, what's the theory again? I think knight and rook is somehow easier to beat against another rook. Uh, bishop and rook is, is harder, okay. This should just be a draw. <laughs> Be careful not to, to step into a uh, square like uh, G3 because of all this check. So, Peaceful Warrior uh, has got nothing to lose. He needs to... Well, he needs to convert this within 50 moves. That's one of the, the issues. And this is... He's slowly but surely getting the king down. I play bishop e5 now. Okay. Meanwhile, what is uh, Kanye and them up to? Devon uh, pulling a <laughs> win for black, says uh, Banele in the chat. Psychologically, I agree. You were losing and now... Just look at this. How did this happen? And suddenly, you're the one with the pause pawn. Both down to not a lot of time on the clock. I think we, we should be sticking to this game. There is some drama. <clears throat> C4 
six seconds, don't get flagged now. Is that pawn running through? That would be absurd. And now King G. Yeah, knight, knight g5 makes sense. Rook check, king. But now you can push the pawn. And if rook check, just king g3. Push the pawn, push the pawn, push the pawn. There you go. And that's king g3. And that's all she wrote. Game over. Wow. White resigns. Connor goes down. He was completely winning. Where was knight takes g3? I'm missing something. They're saying knight takes g3 was a good move. I'm, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know. So this is draw, but what a game. Um, just to remember where we were a few moments ago and how tricky it is to beat Devon. This is this is what happened. The Queen's got off and White was plus four. These two parts pawns are monsters. But uh, Devon swindled this. And he did not just make a draw. He actually went for the win when he got half the chance to do that. And incredible. Pushes the pawn. Rook check and then bishop uh, would have been the draw idea. Well, in chess you never know. You never know. Okay, let's see what's uh, happened in Marcia's game. Marcia's king is on the side of the board, so... Um... Mawe is saying Masia will, will draw this. Uh, I wonder how many moves since the last pawn move. Let's, uh, let's go back a bit. Oh, we're going to have to go back a big bit. Okay, so here was the pawn. So that's the last move. 89. Where are we now? 89 to 120. So, uh, 129 will be 40 moves. So, needs to win within 19 moves. He's got 20 more moves. He needs... He needs to move before 139. Let's see if it happens. You can't move your king now. I like the idea here by black. Bishop f4. King g1. Threatening mate and Masia can do nothing. Wow. Great technique there by the peaceful warrior. Uh, by the way, uh, 11 moves before the 50 move rule would have applied. Great technique. And uh, Masia actually just blundered it right in the end, this move. Rook g8 or something. Wait. The computer says rook g8. 
Make your move, computer. <laughs> Just to show you guys how tricky that end game is. In any case, uh, that concludes uh, round round twelve for the open section and round ten for the under twenties. Uh, thanks for watching this round. I, I enjoyed it a lot, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next round soon. Uh, thank you, and see you soon.